had in particular a strong interest in Africa. In Africa, when the people of Africa were struggling for independence, he was supporting them in his art. He loved his country very much. You might have uh, heard about his pictures, his, his paintings. Most of them, he, he, he doesn't want to sell it to other, I mean, to foreigners and to other people because he wants to save it to Ethiopian people. Uh, he uh, picked up ideas and, and, and executed them. For example, he made a, quite a series of beautiful scarves uh, that are immediately recognizable as being something Ethiopian. You know. I want people to look at my art and find hope. I want people to feel good about Ethiopia, about Africa, to feel the delicate rays of the sun. The most honorable meter artist, world laureate, Afor Takli, was once quoted as saying, Speaking about his lifelong dedication to the fine arts, meter Afor Takli instilled the importance of using art to inspire people, to uplift nations, and to create an optimistic view of life. According to the art, what we do today must reflect today's life for tomorrow's generation and pave the way for the future generation. He said, art is in every fabric of life. Honorable Mater Artist Well Laureate Afor Tekle was born on October 22, 1932, in the old historic city of Ankover in Shawa province of Ethiopia. As a schoolboy, Afor revealed an intense artistic interest in life around him. He was ever found busy with pencil or pen, sketching and drawing. He was one of the earliest batches of African students admitted to exclusive boarding schools in England. It started in 1947 when he got a scholarship to study in England. Afro was sent to London to be a mining engineer, but he wasn't interested in mining engineering and clearly he was interested in art and it was clear from the beginning that he had artistic talent. My mother had been an artist and had studied art, and she wrote in support of his application to Addis Ababa, and so from that time onwards, he was working on various things. He was essentially hard working. He worked every day, more or less, until about a week or two weeks before he died. Even on Sundays, he would be working, and he would feel it a shame if he stopped working. He was always working. painters uh, recognized by uh, oh, Ethiopians as well as by foreigners. Of course, uh, Skinder Bogasia, Gabriel uh, Christos Desta, even now Zaruni uh, Timgeta. Uh, we have a lot uh, that, uh, who are recognized by uh, uh, outside and inside Ethiopia. But the, 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 uh, Afork is unique because first he has his own line. He, he is very unique. He's realistic, and his uh, painting is basically, as I have said, is indigenous. 
Afork is, is uh, a man of uh, tradition plus civilization or modern, modernization, you know. This is what makes him very popular and uh, known by all over the world. And uh, Afork also is a very uh, educated person uh, in every uh, aspect, not only in painting only. His versatility, his, his ability to um, create something out of a completely new medium. So in addition to continuing to be primarily a painter, uh, also doing the mosaics and the other uh, things that he mentioned, uh, he uh, picked up ideas and, and, and executed them. For example, he made a, quite a series of beautiful scarves uh, that are immediately recognizable as being something Ethiopian. You know? And then um, he did a lot of posters, um, he did playing cards, uh, anything that he touched, he produced something interesting. Upon completion of his studies and returning to Ethiopia, the artist traveled throughout the country to every province, staying at each location for up to three months, impressing himself in the study of his surroundings and observing Ethiopia's real historical and cultural diversity. He pushed himself to become an Ethiopian artist with world recognition. <laughs> Of all the things, Afork has unconditional love for his country. He cares too much. Everything he has done is Ethiopian. The way he dresses, the way he eats and drinks, and everything he does. Whatever he has done to, throughout his life, he used to tell us that this is my, for my country. This is for my country. That's all. Has never, I mean, uh, as I as I have told you that, uh, for he has uh, a lot of things. Even he has a painting that has been uh, uh, given for about twelve million dollar and more than that also. He doesn't want to sell it. For if he if he wants, he can sell it and he can have, he can have his own airplane and he can have his own, uh, I don't know. Uh, special life, but he doesn't want. He wants to give this to present to his people, to his, uh, to, to, to his country. So he collected, he put it, he organized it like that. You can just now, you can open the door and you can make it a, a museum. You cannot do anything. He put it everything orderly, properly, and very, very, very consciously. So. Uh, that's a big contribution to, uh, to, to Ethiopian people. I think he is extremely versatile and also his creativity took many forms, so that um, he would be interested, for example, um, in fishes. And out of this interest in fish in the sea, he would create the most beautiful paintings that really gave you the feeling of uh, uh, animals in the water under the sea. <laughs> His paintings, especially the one we find at the main gate of the UNECA, are one of the famous pieces which are pride for not only Ethiopians, but also the whole Africa. Recently, he started another painting which portrays the bright future of Africa. Unfortunately, he died before he finished it. He is a man of realist. If it is the painting is a realist, you, can, you should not, I mean, uh, you need not to have a, an interpretation. Uh, well, some, of course, 
for example, Mother Ethiopia, if you see Mother Ethiopia, there was a very uh, disappointing uh, approach during the dark time, you know. The Mother Ethiopia, if you, saw, if you see the Mother herself, is very beautiful, a woman from the, somewhere from the big family, you know. The, her son also is very, uh, you know, very uh, uh, fat, fat, fat boy. Uh, he's grown up in her uh, shoulder, and he's very, really uh, beautiful boy. But during that time, there was a uh, um, uh, hunger in Ethiopia during Iris Lassie's time, you know, during the dark time. So they say that, people say that, what kind of mother is she? You know, Ethiopia is, well, she, she lives in a, in a hunger time, uh, she has no anything to eat, she can't be a mother like that, uh, she should be very thin. You cannot, you cannot make, you cannot say this is Ethiopia, and the boy also is very fat. You can't call him a, a man of, uh, I mean, a boy of Ethiopian uh, mother, and so forth. That, there was a critique like that, you know. So Aforki said, yes, it might. that is your mother, not my mother. I wish my mother, like, not, not, uh, not uh, the, she is my mother that I wish for the future. She should be like that. You know, if you, if you see that picture, he is, he wake up, he, he's not, uh, no, he's sleeping, he's sleeping, but he's very grown up. You can, should not be, he has to go, he has, he has to go around. He's just see, uh, sleeping on her uh, shoulder like this, you know. So he said that, this is stupid, you see. The mother is seeing him like this, and the child is sleeping. The message of the painter is, or the artist is, she's blaming him. You are sleeping. You are already grown up. Why don't you go out and work and feed your people, yourself? That's why she's blaming to him, to, to this uh, young man who is sleeping. So sometimes you can translate his, 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 his uh, uh, painting. Uh, deeply, but uh, generally anybody can see it, can understand it very easily. This is Afolk's character. He was very, very meticulous about his appearance. Mm -hmm. um, so he, designed, he painted himself in a gala costume with mm -hmm. a, a high quality Ethiopian clothes. But he also uh, uh, designed other national dresses. Mm -hmm. when, he was, uh, uh, when he went to collect his prize for, for art, he was the first um, person to get the um, Haile Selassie Prize for Ethiopian art. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody had to be in um, European gala dress, I don't know, black yeah. tail or something very formal. And he turned up with an Ethiopian dress. And I mean, this absolutely scandalized everybody because he was not keeping to what he was told to do. But he came in his own design dress and <laughs> Actually, he never got into trouble for it, surprisingly. Yeah. He got away with it. But there, he was quite bold, and he thought Ethiopians should have proper Ethiopian dress, and they should be properly designed, and he did it. He also um, was interested in, in, in European or Western dress, and uh, from somewhere he heard uh, and, and uh, designed himself um, a coat, uh, coat and trousers, you know, uh, w w without buttons and buttonholes, but held together with magnets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he was very original in his clothing, and, and he, he was uh, forever looking for ways of being different. Not looking for them, he just was different. Whenever there is an invitation, he always wears a traditional clothes, and I do the same. 
but his way of dressing is unique. He gives it his own style, and each style has its own meaning for him. You know, a day, uh, mascal flower, you know, you know, it has a long story about that, you know. Uh, he did it, first, you know, he wants to paint it on the bars, the mascal flower. And then he just changed his mind. You know why? During that time, during the Ethiopia, during his uh, time, I mean, they, they, in the palace, the princesses and they used to dress European uh, costume, you know. They, they have never been used to Ethiopian costume. So, Ethiopian dress, I mean. So what, what he wants to show is, uh, he put, I mean, he, instead of drawing musk and flower on the bus, he wants to make, he wants to dress her a very beautiful, girl, you know, Mascal, uh, you know, the, the, the painting of Mascal. Yeah. She's very beautiful. She dressed Ethiopian dress, but in the modern way. So he wants us to show that you can use Ethiopian dress by making modern and use it for the palace, uh, for party, for uh, uh, wedding and for everything. And from that on, I think that is what the starting point that the Ethiopian dress become now very popular. He loves Ethiopia. He loves Ethiopian culture also. Not only Ethiopian culture, he loves the indigenous Ethiopian culture, you know. This is what Afro is. Maskal, he started from the indigenous Ethiopian costume. And then he, he uh, bring up, you know, he just uh, make a little bit development on that uh, the indigenous culture, you know. This, is, this should be uh, very uh, fundamental for Ethiopian uh, artists, uh, for Ethiopian writers also, to start from the indigenous and then to make it better. Yeah, he also uh, designed for the uh, Addis Ababa universities for the college students, university students, doctors, masters, uh, the costume. When they, uh, during the graduation, we used to dress this black kind of uh, European uh, uh, dress, as you know. He, he has ch he changed that. He changed everything and he made it by himself a very uh, special uh, uh, graduation dresses, but no, nobody used that one up to now. He always used the base, everything from Ethiopia, from Ethiopian indigenous culture, the line from Ethiopia, the light from Africa. So this is his base.